Hi beauties, welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are doing well. Today I'm going to be creating this very festive, very glamorous Karwa Chauth look for all my beauties out there. Now since this is uh, the year when we are celebrating most of the festival indoors and with our closed ones, it does not mean that we can't add a little bit of glitz and glam to our looks and that's what I did precisely in this video. Honestly, I feel like a bride yet again and happily so. So if you want to see how I created this a very glamorous look from scratch, then watch this video until the end. Also because you want to see me model this very elegant garment that I'm wearing also at the end of the video. Now if you're new here, make sure you're subscribed to my channel and you also hit the notification bell. Do also follow me on my Instagram account and now without further ado, let's dive right into this video. So guys, I'm already feeling quite festive and uh, quite embellished as well uh, with all that's going on. I am going to show you uh, the full length of the garment as well and the entire look once it's completed. So what I've done is basically pulled back my hair in a bun and then put a gajra. It's a pretty simple one, center parted hair like you see me in a lot of my videos. Now I love gajras, especially with Indian wear and especially when it is as festive as Karva Chauth or if it is Diwali. I do like to, if I'm wearing a bun, put some sort of uh, flowers in my hair. Uh, I mean, that's really nice and traditional. So I couldn't find a real gajra today, but I did have an artificial one. So I have put that uh, right here on my bun and uh, we'll make do with this but honestly I love gajra I love the fragrance so whenever I can find I actually like to go in with that you could also put some roses just to amp up the look and uh, just to bring about more festivity now I've already uh, done my skincare so my uh, face is very well moisturized what I did do and I have started doing this uh, about six months ago I started using some sort of an oil underneath my makeup, underneath my eyes specifically because uh, I started to notice that my concealer started sitting, settling into my lines right here. Also sometimes, you know, it tends to get dry around the crow's feet area. So I just to well moisturize it, I just make sure that I have some sort of an oil. I take almond oil, press in between my ring fingers. And just pat it underneath my eyes so that is already done i did it about uh, 30 45 minutes ago when i did my skincare now even after doing my skincare really well putting uh, a facial oil or some sort of a hydrating cream i do like to go in with some sort of hydration uh, before i start my makeup because it's been about an hour since i did my skincare although my skin feels pretty much hydrated but I would like to go with some sort of a base underneath my makeup, especially with this one, because this is going to be a little bit of a heavy base. So I have uh, two options here. Now I have come back to this. I used to, uh, I have actually moved away from silicon primers. I used to use them. They're really nice and they fill up the pores, etc. But I really feel that this is something uh, that is, uh, you know, a favorite or uh, something that will always be in my makeup vanity. I many a times wear it even when I'm not wearing makeup. What I'm talking about is the MAC strobe cream. Now I have two options here, uh, the peach light, which is the bigger one. And then I have the pink light. Pink light is my all time favorite, but I do like the peach light as well, which I um, started using very recently. I'm going to spread this very well all over my face and you will see that the peach light is a little bit uh, more luminosity than the pink light. So it doesn't have any chunky glittery particles as such, but you will see that it really hydrates the face and gives it that sort of a luminosity. I like to start from the center of my face always whenever I do any sort of skincare and then just kind of spread it out. And I'm going to do this on the other side as well. Now, do you see that it has a sort of a, a reflection cream in it? That's what I call it. It does give you very, very uh, well hydrated kind of a look. And I really recommend this. I think this is uh, going to work on many skin types, to be honest, especially uh, for winters. I like to put this underneath my makeup, especially on the high points of my face because this will bring out your high points as well once your makeup is complete. You will see what I'm talking about once the entire makeup is in place. Now I did zoom you up a little bit so that you're up close and you can see all the different steps that I'm doing and how I'm doing them. I'm gonna go ahead with some foundation now. The one that I'm gonna use today is the Milani Conceal and Perfect 2-in-1 Foundation. This is a really, really high coverage 
if you're looking for a full coverage foundation, highly recommend this. Um, it doesn't oxidize, at least not on me. It really works very well. And the color also is a fairly good match for my skin, which is medium beige. So I find it a little bit difficult when it comes to selecting colors in uh, foundation because uh, I'm a neutral undertone. I do have a little bit of pinks and a little bit of uh, yellow in my undertone and uh, hence uh, finding the perfect color becomes a little bit difficult. But this one is a pretty close match. So I'm going to be using a beauty sponge where I've picked up a little bit of foundation. This is the pack sponge. I love the pack sponges because... Um, they don't absorb a lot of product and they really, really work really well when it comes to blending. So um, do you see that's a pretty decent match when it comes to the foundation color and this is a pretty full coverage foundation. Also, this foundation is um, in between. I feel if you're dry skin, combination skin, you can use this even if you're oily skin because for me, this is very luminous. It's hydrating, but it doesn't... Um, you know dry or crack on my face i like to take a little bit foundation on my forehead because i feel it tends to either crack or oxidize after a while so i'm going to keep it very little when it comes to my forehead i'm also having some sort of an allergy right here i don't know if you can see this um maybe it's because of some new skincare that i've been trying i really don't know how to figure it out but uh, started having some sort of bumps right here but you will see that this foundation practically covers everything. On a daily basis, I like to use a very light foundation. I'm not someone who's into a lot of heavy coverages uh, when it comes to foundation. I like to keep it light and simple. Now this foundation is pretty high coverage like you see here. It will take care of any sort of blemishes and even acne scars. You can go in with two layers and two pumps. Honestly, for me, one pump is more than enough. I just like to make sure that I spread it and blend it out really well. It's not heavy uh, on the skin. So I really like that about this foundation. You can conceal with this foundation, but I'm going to be going in with another concealer of mine. This is the LA Girl Pro Conceal in the color Pure Beige. Now, this is a very good concealer if you want to, uh, particularly the color is very good if you want to cover your dark circles. And uh, I will be using a lighter one from the brand Wet n Wild Photo Focus Concealer in the shade Medium Beige. This is basically going to be my highlighting concealer. So do you see that depth underneath my eyes right here? I do like to, uh, you know, sort of highlight this area a little bit and kind of... So first I'm going to conceal and then highlight this area. Now this concealer sets pretty fast so you've got to be a little bit quick with this. Uh, I usually do one eye at a time but I've applied on both the eyes. But never mind we'll just blend it out with a damp beauty blender and this one from PAC does a really good job especially blending out a concealer. Do you see it already started setting in so you've got to be quick with this concealer it nonetheless does the job of um, you know covering your dark circles really well. Now I'm going to take the Wet n Wild concealer and I'm just highlighting underneath my brow bone just to give that highlighted sort of look and right here where I have a little bit of depth uh, underneath my eyes uh, just to sort of uh, put the entire thing together. So you will see that this line kind of fades away and uh, that's an illusion of course but that kind of fades away and uh, do you see the difference now? It's just to, you know, highlight and uh, the depth it doesn't show that much between the eyes. Also, I'm going to blend this part right here. Now, I'm going to go ahead and set the under eye area, basically the concealer, so that it does not move. I'm going to be using the Laura Mercier uh, Loose Powder in Translucent. I really like this. Uh, even the Maybelline one is pretty good. Um, I have used that. I somehow couldn't find that today but that's a pretty good loose powder as well from the drugstore so i take it on my damp beauty sponge only and then i just start to apply this just press it underneath my eyes on top of the concealer i'm not going to be setting the eyelid because we are going in with foundation uh sorry with the um, eyeshadows and eyeshadows basically stick better if you have uh, a little bit of a tacky base 
Now I'm going to go ahead and do up the brows. I didn't realize that my camera wasn't recording. So I did go ahead and do up this brow. Now you will see that I don't fill my brows uh, very heavily. I like to just fill in the scanty spaces because I do have uh, pretty full brows. So if you see the difference, that's really as much that I like my brows to be nice and thick and a little bit dark. Now I have two options for uh, a brow whiz. Uh, both of these are the ones that I personally really like. One is a drugstore, the other one is a high-end. I have the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Wiz and the Wet n Wild uh, Retractable Pencil. So if you're looking for something affordable, this is good. A little bit waxy, but does the job really well. Today I'm going to be using the Anastasia one. I really like the tip of this. It has spoolie on the other end as well, so it becomes very easy to fill up your brows. And you will see that I will just fill up the scanty spaces. Now we are going to go ahead and bronze the face and the bronzer that I'm going to use today is the What Shady Beaches from Wet n Wild. I uh, really like this, it's nice and a very very orangey sort of a bronzer. I like something that's nice and uh, you know just gives you that soft warmth to the face. I'm going to be using uh, the Pro Art P F12 brush, I'm going to leave all the details of the brushes and all the products that I'm using in the description box. This is a very, very pigmented bronzer. So you take a little bit, ever so slightly dip your brush, tap off the excess. And then I'm just going to start from this portion of my face. Basically, I will first uh, draw a contouring line and then I'm just gonna blend this into my temples also a little bit. Okay, now that we have some warmth going on on the face, I'm going to go ahead and add some blush. Um, I'm going to be using this Kiro Blush Glow on Blush Duo in the shade uh, Cinnamon and Fresh Grapefruit. Really, really like this color. It's nice and uh, obviously has uh, two colors in here. So I'm just going to dip my brush a little bit. This is a Miniso brush, uh, a blush brush. This is a very pigmented blush. So I'm going to start from the top and just pat it uh, onto my cheeks. I like to take my blush a little bit higher as well and also pat it through. I'm also going to take the blush a little bit on my nose because that gives a very flushed look to the entire face. If at any point you feel that you've overdone your blush or your bronzer, just take your damp sponge and just run it through. Uh, although with this look I feel a little bit of peachy cheeks are going to look really nice so I'm going to just let that be. Uh, and this is a matte blush, so it doesn't really uh, look too much in the face. So I'm going to leave it at that, add a little bit more to the apples, and uh, then we're going to go ahead and use some highlighter. Now before applying the highlighter, I'm going to go ahead and do up the eyes. I'm going to be using two eyeshadow palettes. First one is uh, the Tan Beauty. Uh, if you guys remember, I did show this to you in my top 10 favorite eyeshadow palettes and uh, the second one is the Nykaa Eyes on Me eyeshadow palette in the shade Beachside Peach. Both of these are really uh, my favorite eyeshadow palettes because they have some highly pigmented colors and uh, they sit on really really well. You will see right here this has a blend of various different colors. Uh, so first I am going to use, I don't have a look in mind, I'm just going to go as uh, I see the palette and whatever colors come to me. Obviously keeping the outfit in mind but I usually like a very smoked out and a very orangish sort of a, a brown smoky eye kind of a look. So we are going in with that uh, look and then I'm also going to be using some of the glitters in here and also in this eyeshadow palette. First I'm going to take a fluffy crease brush and go in with this shade right here called Nectar and just uh, use this as uh, a transition color just to begin the entire look. Now this eyeshadow palette is very pigmented so make sure that you tap off the excess and uh, I'm just going to start here on my crease and this is a color that I'm going to blow out a little bit also uh, towards the uh, brow bone area.
Now with a more densely packed brush and this is the pack 114, I'm going to go in with the shade Blow a Kiss which is this one right here and this is uh, a lot more sort of a brown orange kind of a color uh, which I'm going to keep in my crease and uh, I'm just going to make sure that I blend both the color that I added before which was Nectar and this together. Now I'm going in with my fluffy brush and then I'm just going to make sure that both the colors are really well blended together. Now with the same pack brush I'm going to pick up this very burgundy shade and I'm going to start uh, putting this in the outer corner of my eye and then blend it inward. So we want to make sure that we start from the outer corner specifically and then kind of blend it upwards. Now I will take this in the crease but nothing beyond the center of my eye. Now with the help of a more fluffy brush like this, but this apparently is not that stiff. It's a little bit more fluffier than the previous one that I was using. I'm going to pick up uh, the shade Bed of Roses, this one right here. Now all the brushes uh, other than pack that I'm using are from the brand Cuffs and Lashes. Some of their brushes I really like. Uh, they got sent to me in a PR package recently and I have been trying out these brushes ever since. Now I'm just going to put uh, this color all over my lid and kind of blend it out as well. This particular brush is very good if you want to do up your crease as well. Now with the help of the same pack brush, I'm going to finish up my lower lash line as well. So first I'm going to take a blow a kiss which is uh, the brown color and then I'm going to go ahead with uh, this burgundy shade right here. So basically I'm going to mix both of these colors and just smoke out my lower lash line a little bit. For my inner corners, I went with this color called Highlight, which is a pretty much like a silver sort of uh, champagne color. And I just highlighted my inner corners uh, with this ever so slightly. We want a little bit of a punch in the inner corners, not a lot. Okay, I decided to stick to the same eyeshadow palette and pick up the glitter as well and not use the Nykaa one. I'm going to go in uh, with Bonfire, which is a pretty beautiful golden color right here. And I'm going to fill this in uh, with a sponge applicator. Basically, I'm going to take the clean side of this and pick up the color on the sponge applicator. Usually, glitters come out really well with your fingers. Uh, but let's start with this. And I'm just going to apply this start from the inner corners. Okay, once I have the glitter in place in my inner corners, I would just take my ring finger and spread it out so that it does not look uh, like it's put separately. It kind of looks uh, well blended. So I'm just going to spread it out towards the outer corner, but obviously not taking completely out and uh, just to give it a more well blended look. Now I'm going to take an angular brush like this, this is from Vega, and pick up the black color which is called Coal in the palette and then I'm just going to make an eyeliner very very close uh, to my lash line right here and I'm going to start from the center. I'm basically just smoking out and just giving that sort of a black eyeliner effect on top of my lash line. Now I'm going to coat my lashes with some mascara, upper and lower lashes. The mascara that I'm going to use today is the Huda Beauty Legit Lashes Mascara. Uh, this is a pretty voluminous mascara as well. And then I'm going to go ahead and put some falsies. And the ones that I'm going to be using today are Pack Pro 01. These are one of my favorite pair of falsies uh, from the drugstore. Super duper affordable, very natural as well. I'm going to do this and be right back. So guys, I switched up the lighting a little bit because natural light obviously is very unpredictable. So I added a bit of my uh, drawing room chandeliers. Now what I've done here is that I added a little bit of eyeliner as well because my eyes were looking a little bit underdone. And you guys know I love an eyeliner. It adds a beautiful touch. 
Uh, so my eyes, I feel, are looking very complete now. I love how this eye look has turned out. Nice, uh, soft, smoky eye look. The eyeliner that I used is the Huda Beauty Life Liner. Uh, this is a dual-ended liner. has a liner on uh, eyeliner on one end, and then you have the coal, uh, which is a retractable coal on the other. Nice and matte. Of course, the bindi had to come along because that completes the festive look, especially if it is a karva chauth look. And finally, I went ahead and added some, uh, a little dot here as sindoor. Now, I did not, I couldn't find my sindoor. I do have a liquid one. So what I do usually is I would just take any liquid lipstick. In this case, I took the Kiro lipstick and then just added a dot here. I really feel for an entire festive look. And to give that really nice married karwa chot sort of a look, uh, the sindoor and the bindi really brings the look together. Now I'm going to go ahead and complete the rest of the makeup. First, let's add some highlighter because um, one of my favorite face products when it comes to makeup. What I have here is uh, the K-Beauty Illuminating Highlighter in the shade Copper Shine. Very beautiful coppery sort of a color. It actually would go on a more deeper skin tone, but I personally really like this. It's nice and uh, also it pops out really well. So I'm just going to take a little bit on this brush of mine, which is a real technique setting brush. And I'm going to start putting this on the high points of my face. If you are someone who's a little bit deeper skin tone than me, uh, this is going to pop really well on you. I personally love it. So, I mean, I just like using this irrespective. So I... Uh, go ahead and use this. Also, it's not chunky, which is what I really like. I'm also going to add this on the tip of my nose to give an overall glowy effect. And then a bit on my cupid's bow as well and a little bit on my chin. Before going ahead with the lipstick, I'm going to go ahead and set the entire makeup. I'm going to use my most favorite setting spray. It's the MAC uh, Prep and Prime Fix It. Uh, this is the one that I really like. Now I'm going to spray this very generously and let it dry a little bit. Now I'm going to go ahead with a lip color and uh, only a red lip color can do justice to this look. Uh, of course, it's karva chauth, it's festive. Not just that, overall my outfit really demands a red lip color. The one that I'm going to go ahead with is from K-Beauty. This is in the shade Autograph. I really like K-Beauty lip colors because like I said, they're super matte. You have seen me wear a couple of their colors. So I'm first going to line my lips with this because it's easy to do that and then fill in as well. So guys, that's the final look. I love creating this different sort of a look. I decided to chuck the earrings and go with the nose ring to add a bit of a glamour to the entire look. I really hope that you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and also hit the notification bell. And until I see you next, guys, thank you so much for watching. Love you all. Bye-bye.